Hi guys, and we're immediately back. Um, I've got my NURPS brand soda here. NURPS, new exciting retail products for you. And now that I'm sufficiently refreshed, we're going to go do all those NPC communications because that's the way that you unlock uh, cool... Um, like side quests and stuff. If it's if the last game is anything to go by, anyway. Um, no, I have no new messages. Read my old messages. There's all my old messages. If I forget where, open jobs directory. Those are my jobs. So I got notes on the jobs. That's cool. Access the shadow lines. Uh, let's post this pay data that I stole for sale. Let's get this. So in two days, it will escrow account it to me. So that's. Uh, let's search for relevant keywords. Thread misconnections. You rappling down the side of an unnamed luxury. Okay, this. Okay, you rappling down the side of an unnamed luxury hotel in a ball gown on Monday night. Me admiring the view from the 28th floor urinals during a, pr a private a soiree for, with an unnamed corporation that I was infiltrating. Our eyes met briefly before you could, before you dropped out of sight. Your long dark hair had come loose from... You, oh, okay. You're carrying a duffel bag. Bulging with stolen prototype weapon really well. I felt the intel that goes with it. Can we connect? Blackjack! Okay, so we're in the year 56. Uh, which I believe is the year after... Uh, the President of the United, United States that was... Um, or UCAS rather. The Dragon one was assassinated, so... There we go, we're in a... Uh, 2056. Very funny, Blackjack. I'm sorry the job went sideways. I got trapped and had only one way out. Red Queen. Well, we were supposed to have each other's backs. Just wait till you hear the way out that I had to take, Blackjack. We gotta lay low for now. And why are we posting about this on public message board, Red Queen? Terrorists in Hong Kong! Been hearing some buzz about... <laughs> Been hearing some buzz about some mainlander terrorists that showed up in Victoria Harbour and had a shootout with the HKPF the other day. Anyone heard anything on that? Dong Jiang. Ming Pao said that there were four of them that got away. Three orcs and a dwarf. A troll, an elf and a human were all killed on scene. Word is that they're some kind of terrorist cell and they're hit strike at the executive council. War for us. Looks like there's a 50,000 new yen reward for any information leading to their capture. The HKPF seems pretty nervous about letting these bastards walk freely around the streets. Heaven shot. He's so lit. You think they'd actually pay out somebody like us? Not a chance. You walk in there to claim the reward, you're getting thrown in a hole with them. The HKPF doesn't keep promises to the sinless. Freedom Cowboy. Couldn't hurt to try. Why do you have to be such a downer, Heaven shot? Because I know the police. They're all dirty. They're the only th they're only in it to protect their paychecks, and they don't give a damn about anybody else. Believe me, I'm just looking out for your best interests. Freedom Cowboy. Like you and your triad looked out for my brother? You know he's still paying for his reconstructive surgery, you bastard. Dong Jian. If a man wants to keep his teeth, he should pay what he owes rather than pull a gun on me. Simple as that. Freedom Cowboy. Poetry Slam. Ladies and gentlemen, poets and shadow runners, welcome to the first annual Shadowland Poetry Slam. There are no rules, and there are also no prizes, except bragging rights. With no further ado, let the versification begin, Matrix Bard. How long do you think we can keep this going before the troll shop or a system admin shuts us all down? Jive Bert. Tennis, okay. Why would they shut us down? It's free board. We can be poetic if we want to. Tennyson, I think. Just trust me, it happens. For some reason, <laughs> these things always draw the worst of sort of attention to Jai, but I don't see any poetry here. Are you going to give us a poem, or are you going to start standing around complaining about why you can't? Max Matrix Bard. Alright, I got one. Wait for it. Jai, but... Synth muscle. Smart links. Neural boosters. Cyber limbs. Or fault to grenades. Um, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
One, two, three, four, five. Synth muscle. So very almost a haiku from Joe Burt. Five, seven, five for haiku. A little musing of the transient life in the shadows. Very nice, sir. Matrix Ward. When the long shadows fall on Hong Kong, neon lights pierce the coming night. Tread with me to the velvet darkness, blackness even. Let no lamp shine on our deeds. Tennyson. That one's entitled Our Hour. Tennyson again. This might just be the most pompous thing I've ever read. Try this one emphasize. Lizes are red, shadows are black. We're mad on the street. You best watch your back. Now you're mad. <laughs> My poem wasn't pompous, you uncultivated rube. It was an homage to Wang Wei, the famous Tang Dynasty master of Jeju form of poetry. It's traditional, unlike that ridiculous limerick you posted. Tennyson. No, no, I don't think you have to take the word slam quite so literally, Matrix Bard. Hey, you people know the rules. Poetry slams have been out of bounds on this BBS since the Laughing Man debacle of 55. If you want to sling your fancy words, do it on a different forum. I'm shutting this thread down. System off. Told you, Joe Burt. The Walled City. i got a courier job next week that's supposed to take me into the Walled City. I'm from Kuala Lumpur. And I've never been to Hong Kong, but I hear this place dangerous as hell. Is there anything I should know? Hantu Raya. Oh, you've got nothing to worry about. It's just low-cost housing development full of hard-working people. Here, take a look at this news report. Freedom Cowboy. Oh, cool. This is Sunny Shwang. Sunny Shwang. It's Sunny Shwa... I don't know what her name is from Horizon News. On today's Sunny Side Up, the Kowloon Wall City, a blight on the free enterprise zone, or low-cost housing for economically disadvantaged, We'll introduce you to some of the hard-working residents now that they live and how that they contribute to the growth and prosperity of our city. And there's a montage. Many residents of Hong Kong regard the Bull City as a place of no return. To outsiders, it's the last stop on a long road to homelessness. Rumours bound of feral ghouls, unsafe living conditions, and triad extortion. Yet when we went there, the reality was far different. What we saw will shock you citizens of Hong Kong, working and living just like the rest of us. Their apartments are smaller and their shops more modest, but the people who live here wouldn't be out of place anywhere in the FEZ. Citizens like Shoemaker, Kao Sang Sui. I love it here! We have a community, you know? We're like a family. Maybe we don't have as nice a view as you d they do in the Repulse Bay, but I can't imagine living anywhere else. It's no paradise, no, but it's my home. I grew up here. How could I possibly leave? Contrary to popular opinion, the Bull City serves a vital function. The poor and downtrodden find a home in the Wall City, a community where they have a voice, can work, and even prosper. Far from the being the eyesore that... Okay, I've decided to cut the rest of the crap. She keeps going on about a good place the Wall City is, and how we all need it. Don't buy any of it. It may not be hell, but you can see it from the Freedom Cowboys just trying to get you in trouble. Oh, it's Isabel. Hi, Isabel. How do you know the real story, Hunter? Because I grew up there. You know what it's really like? It's eating old broth made from rat bones because there's nothing else. It's watching your neighbours sell their five-year-old son to organ leggers so they don't starve to death. Isabel. When you die in the Bald City, your neighbours cheer because that'll get, they'll get the clothes off your back. I won't wish the Bald City on my worst enemy. Okay. I'm gonna go talk to my dudes. And this is my room. Start from the top and work our way down. Gob it! Sup? Gobbit's nest is pretty much what you'd expect piles of clothes on the ground. An overflowing garbage bin surrounded by stacks of instant noodle packets and towers of tinned oysters. And avant garde posters haphazardly thumbed up to the walls, overlapping in some places and peeling in others. It feels a lot like an old, like an art school dorm room. Garbit reclines in the corner, cradling a bowl of soup in her hands. At her feet, a cast iron pot simmers away on the ele electric hot plate. Contents are typical Hong Kong comfort food chicken style soy broth, elbow macaroni, tinned ham, tinned ham, and a heaping scoop of egg flavoured mycoprotein. As you wind through the piles of dirty laundry, Garbit slowly lifts her head from her bowl to acknowledge you. Hey, Seattle! How's tricks? Better stop calling me Seattle. Can't come up with something better than that? Of course I can. I can come up with all sorts of things. Can't promise that you'll like them, though. 
Tell you what, why don't you just tell me what you want me to call you? It'd probably be easier if that way for the both of them. I like a bus. You go by your street name, I want. It's kind of a mouthful, but hey, if that's what you want, then so be it. Underdog it is. So, underdog, you want to tell me what you're doing in my bedroom? I'm assuming you're, here to, you're not here to admire the view. Have you had nightmares recently, like bad ones? Yeah, yeah, I have. We all have. Everyone in town. Everyone? Didn't that strike you as odd? Sure does, but lots of odd stuff happens here. In case you haven't gotten the memo, we aren't in the best part of town. In all seriousness, the dreams are coming from inside the Bull City, I'm pretty sure of that. All the negative energy pent up in there, all of that pain and anger and poisonous key, it's leaking out, and while we sleep, it's getting into us. Why stay? Why stay? Oh, I was planning on it. But now, with the APB in the place, Auntie Sheng is the only one thing standing between us and a bullet in the head. Believe me, I'd leave if I could. I'm a lot more frightened of the HKPF than I am of a few bad dreams. At least dreams can't hurt us, right? Who says they can't? Don't worry, Hunter Dog, we're fine here. We, uh. Let's talk about something else. I don't like thinking about the ball seat very much. Too many old fears and bad feelings. How did you get the name Gobbit? I didn't. My mum did. You aren't using the street name? Isn't that dangerous for a shadow runner? No, not really. I'm sinless. There's no electronic record of a girl named Gobbit even existing. The only thing that could really threaten me would be, I would say, the HKPF attaching an APB to whatever file they do have on me. That would be terrifying. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh... It is what it is. If you're up to talking about it, I wanted to go over the ambush back on the docks with you. Yeah, yeah, I figured you would. That was a hell of a thing, right? Clusterfuck of epic proportions. Yeah, that it was. Nodjar and Gutshot were two of the strongest men I've ever known. Quality shadow runners, both of them. I've watched those two fight through situations that kill anyone else and come out on top. And how did they go out? Bang, bang, dead, dead. No blaze of glory, no final speech, just extinguish, smash like bugs. Um, okay. We would have gone the same way if you hadn't got us out of there. It was more right than me. She's the one who... Oh, she? Oh, Kevin. Grabbed me by the gut and led me to the sewer entrance. All I did was follow. Tell me more of this rat. Clever one. She's got me out of more trouble than I care to mention. Got me into a fair amount of it too, but I can always count on her to leave me out of hot water when we need her to. I can feel it in my belly, you know? Sort of tugging sensation. I've long since learned to follow it. I wasn't aware that totems took such a direct control of their shamans. Usually they, they don't mean rat, we sort of have a special bond. She takes care of me and I've always done my best to take care of her. And to pamper her earthly children like these two, meet madness and folly. Uh, interesting choice of name. I like the way they sound, madness and folly. It has no ring to it, right? My girls remind me not to take myself too seriously. I wouldn't trust folly though. She bites. Do I let her drink it? Sure, why not? They're all part of the same nest. Like, well, okay, fair enough. Of course he does, besides... Besides which, I get a shot out for a living. I get shot out for a living, even. I've got bigger things to worry about than a few stray hairs in my noodles. Sweet. I would literally be here all day if I explored all dialogue options, so... Isabel's cabin is ex is an exercising control chaos. A living space is how come she's got such a fucking giant room? Okay, she's got computer shit. This is my personal machine. If you're looking for your missing computer, it's downstairs. Um actually I was hoping to talk got a second. We're talking now, aren't we? I guess so, yeah. Can I ask you a few questions? Go ahead. I'm not stopping you. Have you been having weird dreams? Yes, I think everyone has. Me too, and Gobbit, we both had the same nightmare. I know it happens more often than you think. It's kind of mass psychosis was common where I grew up. Everyone got it. What What's causing it? I don't know. I don't think that I want to. It's quite the machine you've got there. 
It's my pet project. I call it the octopus. You might be able to guess why. Uh, press work. How well does it perform? She's a monster. An absolute beast. Yeah, of course I do. That isn't what this is about. I built the octopus myself. She's mine and no one else in the world has one. Most deckers are early adopters. They buy whatever's new. Shell out huge amounts of new and in hopes of riding the bleeding edge. Stupid. It's an arms race. Deckers do what they have to. They do what's easy. They throw money at the problem. Amateurs. For a quarter of the price of that whiz new cyber deck, I can have five of last year's model. And after I finish daisy chaining them together, the machine that I built will run circles around your store, but won't do. That makes sense to me. Good, that's a good sign. Shows that you're thinking clearly. So, uh, was there something else you needed? Any thoughts on that last run? I am there, remember, so for me, it was pretty much like any other night. I spent the evening tooling around on the octopus. What else you wanted to know? Of course you went there. The... Tell me something about yourself. Something? Okay, I don't like small talk. Does that count? Oh, come on, you've got to give me more than that. No, I don't. Look, it's nothing personal, but I'm not interested in talking about myself. I just don't think that I'm a very interesting person. Sure, I'll drop by and okay. She's like the uh, glory of this, of this, uh, this game. Glory didn't like talking about itself either. Let's talk about, let's talk to Wu. So Wu, got damn goggles on. Okay, he's uh, no, no goggles. Well, that, that's it, I guess. We're runners now. I've got to ask about benefit. Something on your mind, gun show? Don't, just don't. When we're alone, it's either Wu or Duncan. Gun Show doesn't live here. And yeah, there's plenty on my mind. That's why I'm doing equipment maintenance. The discipline of it helps me focus the process. What about you? You look like you want to talk about something. I want to talk about Raymond. Okay, shoot. Did he say anything about me after I left? You know Raymond Emilio. He told us what he wanted to teach us. Told us what he wanted to do. What he wanted us to know, everything else was met with a wall of good nature silence. He used to say, You are the master of the unspoken word, Mr. Wu. Once it is out of your mouth, it is out of your control. That is also quite cool. Uh, shit, what was I meant to tweet? Fuck your ancestors, fuck them to the 18th generation, that's right. So no, after you left, he never said a word about you, not a word. What do you think is going on with him? I don't know, Amelia. He was clearly obsessed with the walled city and whatever prosperity is. Sounds like a sleepwalker trying to stumble his way through a dream or something. A sleepwalker who hires shadow runners. From trier bosses. Raymond was smart, smart as hell. I'm sure he had a reason for using kindly Shang as a fixer. Let's talk about something else. Sure, that's good. Let's talk about being shadow runners. What, what else is there to say? Worked my ass off to pull myself out of the gutter and make something in my life. I did what it took to earn my bronze. And now I'm a mercenary hiding in the shadows of a foreign country doing dirty jobs that corpses need to keep off the books. It's the reverse of everything I wanted. You seem to be taking it pretty damn well, so let me ask you something. Oh shit. You said that you, the, you thought Raymond was alive too. That we'd run the shadows until we figured out what happened to him. Was that true? Yes. Yes it is. Good that we're on the same page. I feel bad knowing that. What's your opinion of Shang? I said she's got us right where she wants us. Right under her thumb. What do you want to talk about specifically? We should keep an eye on Strangler Bow. We should keep an eye on everybody, and that guy is definitely no exception. You sure got his bad side earlier. You gotta be careful about making enemies here. We don't know anything about this place. Screw that guy! Oh shit, I didn't. Oh shit, I picked. Don't tell me how to live. I'm just trying to watch your back since you don't appear to be doing a very good job of it. What about the plastic face man? Creepy dudes, and nothing new to me. In well dressed, creepy corporate dudes. Between the gangers we grew up with and the shit that I've run into as cop, I've seen all kinds. I just want to know who he is and who he works for. Let's talk about something else. Um, let's talk about Gobbit and Isabel. They seem competent considering how young they are, but then again they sound like they've been taking care of themselves since they were pretty young. The three of us worked together well in the World City. Based on that, I bet the four of us would be make a solid crew. Do you trust them? As far as I trust any runner, yeah. It's like Raymond used to say, trust and verify. TRUST AND VERIFY! They haven't given me a reason not to trust them, so until they do, 
I believe what they say and keep my eyes open. Let's talk later. Light's good. I'll do some cardio. Work off some steam. Thanks for rack time for me. You should do the same, Amelia. A couple hundred push-ups would do you some good. I think I will go have a drink. Your loss. Talk to you later. Now I'm going to go down here. Raktor! It's oppressively hot down here and the air is full of synthetic odors that grab you by the sinuses and refuse to let go. You can smell engine grease and melting plastic, ionized air and lead solder. Lead solder? That's probably not safe. A quick scan of the room tells you why. The downstairs tenant has converted the space into a machine shop. Metal fabrication tools and duroplast extruders line the wall and a pair of heavy industrial manipulators hang from the ceiling. A man in black trench coat stands with his back to you, staring at a monitor mate with a sturdy workbench. He addresses you without turning. I was wondering where I meet the new neighbour. His voice pleasant and cultured. There's a hint of Russian. Russian! Ah, I was, uh, I was wondering when I'd meet. Uh, no, I can't do Russian. <laughs> uh, but it's buried under layers of nuance. Please stay where you are. I'll be with you in just a moment. Unless you fancy an unplanned trip to the Chrome Alley, don't touch anything. There are all manners of tools in here that could take your hand clean off. Uh, thanks for the warning, dude. Don't mention it. I have no interest in seeing anyone hurt in my shop, especially not my upstairs neighbour. Uh, let's look at the arm. Focus on the enormous manipulator arms that you saw earlier. They're bulky industrial things, dented from years of heavy use. Each arm has been fit with at least a dozen different welders, soldering guns, extruders and metal fabrication tools. You've seen machinery like this in factories before, but they look terribly out of place in the bolt holes at the cramped engine room. Very good, Jess. It's coming along very nicely, very nicely indeed. God, he's so cool. So sorry to have kept you waiting, miss. Underdog, it's no problem. You're too kind, now tell me, what can I do for... To, what the fuck? Please don't mind the drone, he can be territorial. But as long as you remain civil, he will not bite. Reactor, my mechanical counterpart is called Koshi. Slap him, five. sub man. Yes, well, a pleasure. <laughs> in a community such as here, it's important to be on good terms with one's neighbours. Agreed. Speaking of which, I'd like to ask you some questions, if you have the time. Very well, the morning's casting should still be calling for a few minutes, yes? That's enough time to talk. Uh, are you Russian? You have a very good ear, I'm impressed. Yes, I grew up in... Uh, somewhere... Went to school there, started my career there in the industrial sector, a fairly common story I'm sure. But I've also travelled a great deal and I'm doing so I've absorbed a number of other languages and dialects. How many languages do you speak? Counting Russian and Cantonese? Fifteen. It shows me to admit how I am literate in twelve however. Oh, that's, that's still pretty good. Perhaps when compared to the common man, but I've known a great many polyglots who can and do put me to shame. Arabic has been a particular bugbear of mine. The unfamiliar characters and lack of vowels make it damn tricky to get a handle on. But I suppose that all men have their limits. Koshki is an interesting name for a, a drone. Yes, I suppose that it is. Not many riggers would name their most prized possession after a villain from a fairy tale. Not to my heritage, I suppose. What was the fairy tale about? A thoroughly unpleasant person, Koshki the Deathless, he was called, and for good reason, his soul was cleverly hidden outside of his body, and he could not be killed as long as it remained intact. Koshki was a villain, a notorious kidnapper of women, but something about him always stuck with me. I suppose that it was notion of immortality through cleverness and that resonated. There was something to be learned from that, I'm, sh I'm sure. And so when it came time to name my beloved creation, his was the first name that came to mind. And is your drone Deathless like its namesake? In a manner of speaking, I suppose that he is. I've redundant copies of every th piece of his architecture and his core programming is stored on a disk in a secret location. Should he ever suffer critical damage, I can easily bring him back. I had a plan once to automate the self-repair process. I must confess it was quite ingenious, but alas, my research was lost. One day I will reclaim it and Koshki will become as deathless as the stories claim. And it will not be today. Uh, you've got some interesting... you've got some corp stuff. The same could be said of many in here, this place, I'm sure. This is a smuggler's den, is it not? 
Our entire economy is based on people having things that they shouldn't. Is there a particular device that interests you out of curiosity? Damn robot arms. Good guess, that's precisely what they are. They uh, fell off a boat, you might say. They weren't cheap, but I acquired them and had them mounted to the walls of my shop. I simply had to have them. The return on investments has been dramatic, yes. They're cruder by far than the Waldo machines that I used to in my professional life. But they still do the job and they are mine. They've increased my fabrication capabilities nearly tenfold, and that to me is worth any price. Same morning castings, what did you mean? Exactly that. A casting that I made of a new locomotive assembly for uh, Koshki. Koshki. A biometric design, you see. This one is inspired by walking legs of a decapod crustacean. The mangrove crab, to be specific. That's fascinating, and will this new leg assembly make your drone more effective? That remains to be seen, but there is more to life than combat effectiveness, is there not? And by fabricating new components for Koshki, I unlock options. Different, be different ways of being, even the failures, and there have been many, have value in this context. Wouldn't it simpler to design the parts here and outsource the fabrication? Simply yes, but not better. Here I have unlimited control over the entire process from start to finish, and have the skills to make good use of the control. Drone architecture was once my profession, you see. But now I free myself from the shackles of corporate servitude. I see little reason to rely on outsiders for much of anything. You said you used to work on a corp. Whose payroll were you on? That is something of a sore subject. My departure was involuntary, you see. I did not part terms with my employer under the best of terms. I'll tell you that I worked for Grishin Avacor, but you'll forgive me if I don't want to go into detail. How do you afford to keep all this shit running freelance? The risk of sounding immodest. I've come... <laughs> I've commodified myself rather well. There are always corporations in need of design consultations. Ooh, Dodgers playing uh, Shadowrun 2. Uh, you'd be surprised by how lucrative such work can be. There is always other work that I can turn to into a pinch. Care to tell me what kind of work that is? A rather personal question, wouldn't you say? Well, maybe, but this we're having a personal conversation. Indeed we are, but even in personal conversations, certain topics can be held off limits. Truth be told, I don't feel especially comfortable discussing my side work with relative strangers. Suffice to say that my freelance activities often fall on the illicit end of the spectrum. Tell you what, I'm just going to guess, you're a shadow runner, aren't you? I dislike the term, but yes, I run the shadows. What gave me away? You're drone people on the up and up and don't build murder bots for fun. Such a reductive assessment. I assure you, you're selling my little counterpart quite short. Koshki is combat capable, very much so, but that's far from his only purpose. That being said, I cannot deny that Koshki's aptitude for butchery is important to my work. Should you ever get the opportunity to see him in action, you'll understand why. Seems like everyone on this boat runs shadows. Why not pull our resources and work together? A compelling offer. I'm doing quite well on my own, but I must admit that there are certain jobs for which I am unsuited. Magic eludes me, and I'm not a decker. My strength comes from material objects in the real world, solid things with mass and heft. Things that I can build and operate. Sadly, a great many clients are only interested in teams that can display mastery over the intangible. This group of yours, do you have people who can cover these bases? If so, then perhaps we can help each other out. You live right beneath our feet. Have you ever rented a coffin apartment in the big city? Do you know all the neighbours by name? My situation here is much the same. I tend to keep to myself and your friends don't come down to the engine room. The only real connection we share is that we all live in the wreck by Kindly Shen's largeness. Something, I don't know, I didn't quite catch the last word, I assumed what it said, and I have the feeling now that it didn't say that. Obviously, there are things that I can intuit from your friends from my time here. I've guessed that they were shadow runners. their behaviour fits the profile, but we haven't had any real contact with, the one another, with one another until now, so I'll ask again, does your team make up cover the bases I described? We also have a former security expert, I guess the best way to describe Duncan. In that case, I will accept your offer on a provisional basis. We'll do a few runs together and see how well we get on. If our association bears fruit, it will continue. If not, I will bid you my farewell and go back to working alone. How does that sound? Welcome aboard. Very good. Excellent. When you receive a job, you let me know uh, You know where to find me. My skills and resources are at your disposal. And with that, I'm afraid I must bid you good day. I still have work to do down here. This leg assembly won't clean itself. I'll be in touch. And I with you. Rax is pretty cool. I like that dude. What's down here? Open the door. 
Uh, okay, there's another room. I'm guessing the ghoul dude is gonna go here. Do I have a thing? Hold on, does he get to level up? I'm gonna increase his accuracy for all attacks. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna give him more more run. He's gonna be my melee dude. Sweet. Um Hmm. Now I am torn. No, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna leave that here. I we've got all the chatting and stuff done. So next next episode I'll uh time to run the shadows. I know yeah. This this is all role playing and background information, which I I love, and I definitely am glad that I got to talk to Raktor down there because he's pretty cool and I want him on my team. Um, next time we'll start running the shadows. So until then, guys, um, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. See, I wanna want slash wave. Oh, why I spoke me so much. Peace.